In this video, we're going to take a look at a code demonstration of several scenarios that are common when we're threading in Java. These scenarios are different priorities, sleep, wait, notify, yield, and also a synchronized block and concurrency. Now this is the part two of a video that I recorded a, a little while back in one of my Android development classes. I will emphasize that the threading that we're covering here is fundamental to any Java program, Android or not. It just happened to be I was in an Android class and wanted to explain the, uh, the background of threads a bit more. In the video here, we acted out these threading scenarios that I'm about to demonstrate. If you have not seen that video, I strongly encourage you to watch that video before watching this video. Uh, the video is called Threads in Java Live Example Sleep, Yield, Wait, Notify, Interthread Communications. And we're essentially acting out what I'm about to show you in the debugger. And by the way, there I am on the left. Uh, so if you wonder what I look like, there I am. So nonetheless, I, I'm going to walk through the examples each of these students did. And, uh, and then we'll take a look in the debugger view in Eclipse. So first of all, a few fundamentals about threads. Remember that a thread is a separate process of a Java program, and you can have multiple threads running either simultaneously or almost simultaneously. So essentially a CPU will slice its time up and allow threads to get different time slots so it makes them look like they're running simultaneously or you could have multiple cores or multiple CPUs and the threads actually could be running truly simultaneously. Even without that, threading is very important because it helps us to make a very responsive program where we can still let a user click a button while the program is downloading some data. So anyway, some thread construction that we're going to see when I jump to the editor. Uh, to make a thread, we either have to, ex we have to make a class which extends thread or implements an interface called runnable. Either one's fine. We tend to prefer implementing the interface runnable. And why is that? You can only extend one class, but you can implement as many interfaces as you wish. Either way, you're going to end up with a run method. All of the logic that you want to run in a separate thread belongs in that run method. But don't call the run method. If you call the run method, you're not getting all the benefits of, of threading. If you want to make this run method actually execute in its own thread, you have to call a method called start. The method called start actually allocates the thread and then inside of that new thread invokes run. So I just want to point this out because you're about to see some syntax and I don't want that to be confusing. Okay, first of all, we're going to take a look at thread priority and these two students acted out thread priority. They acted out a couple of other things, but I'm going to keep them in distinct units. So right here, this student is thread number one and this student is thread priority 10. Uh, a surprising thing is that in Java, a 10 is the highest priority you can give a thread. One is the lowest priority. It sounds counterintuitive. It sounds like one should be top priority. A student once gave me a nice analogy, which is imagine one person knocking at your door versus 10 people knocking at your door. You're more likely to turn off the TV and get up if it's 10 people knocking at the door or take some action. So let's look at thread priority. Here's our program. Unlike most of my videos, I've gone ahead and written this entire program just because it is a bit time consuming and I wanted to make this video as concise as possible. So right now I have a, just give you a little run, lay of the land here, a class called thread runner with a main method. Now we cannot start threads from a static method, uh, not easily at least. So I had this go over to a run threads method. I create an object of the class I'm currently in, and then I invoke a run threads method. And from the run threads method, I have all the scenarios set up that we're about to look through. The first one is this low priority, high priority. Notice what I'm doing is I'm creating objects and then I'm passing those objects into a class called thread and then I'm invoking start. So start is the thing that creates a new thread and then invokes the run method in that new thread. Now I have commented out the priorities because I want to show a before and after. What happens if, the, if we run this without priority? After we're comfortable with that, uh, I'll go ahead and add the priorities and we'll see the difference in behavior when we set priority. By the way, what are these threads doing anyway? So I go to low priority and I see that it's just printing a label one and then kind of an increment counter number. It's going to loop a hundred times and print this line a hundred times. Uh, the last part here is going to start at zero and go all the way up to 99. High priority is doing the exact same thing, but it is showing its priority of 10 uh, directly 
uh, right at the start here. So let's see what happens when I run this just as is. It'll print to uh, the console, and I will say that don't take that as a true test of when the thread is running, because there's a whole lot more stuff that's required to get a system out print line to actually print out. There are a lot of other threads that are involved. So this isn't very scientific, but it will still give us a good idea. Again, remember thread number one is the lowest priority. Uh, thread number 10 is the highest priority. I'm starting thread number one first, and then I'm starting the thread 10, the higher priority thread, second. So let's take a look. Okay, when I run this, we see that it starts with the priority 10 thread. And that goes, that has a few iterations, and then it hands off to the priority 1 thread, and then the priority 10 thread, then the pri priority 1 thread again, 1 being the lower priority. It gets a fairly long run here, and then the 10 and the 1 thread start alternating back and forth a little bit. Uh, and then the 10 thread finishes up. If I, and, and, and then, sorry, then it looks like there were a few more left on the one thread. So the one thread is the last to finish up. If I ran this again, we probably would not get absolutely identical results. The handoff between threads uh, would not always fall out the same way, especially based on the operating system that we're using. So now let's add priority. Uh, it, remember, uh, this first run I did had no priority attached. Now I'm going to add a priority. I am going to set the one thread is min priority and the 10 thread is max priority. So let's save, let's run more, one more time and let's see what results we get. Okay, in this case, I go up and we see the 10 and the one start to kind of play back and forth for a little bit, but then all of a sudden the 10 gets exclusive access for a while. Now what could cause that? It could have been just getting the thread started up. It could have been that the, uh, the higher priority thread, the 10 thread, had a little bit of overhead work to do. And so at that point, the lower priority thread, the one thread, had some opportunity to run. But as soon as the 10 was warmed up, you see it just let the one thread in here one time. But if we're looking at laps, we see at this point, the one thread has only made five laps, where the 10 thread, the higher priority thread, has made uh, 12 laps. I'll expand this so we can see it in higher detail. The 10 thread then gets exclusive access without even letting the one thread go beyond five. The 10 thread has exclusive access for quite a while and essentially is able to finish up. And then only after it's finished up, the CPU says, well, hey, uh, I don't have a higher priority thread, so I might as well go to this low priority thread. And now the one thread gets to finish up when it faces no other competition. So you see, once we've assigned priorities and once we've gotten over a little warming step here, the CPU is consistently picking the higher priority thread. Now remember what yield is. Yield is a case where a thread says, you know what, I'm going to be a little bit altruistic. Maybe I have been hogging the CPU too much and maybe I should give somebody else a chance to run. So let's see what happens when we add yield to this equation. Yield's only really going to make sense in the high priority thread because it's the one that's consuming the CPU and it's the one that has the opportunity to pass the baton to somebody else. So we'll say thread dot yield, and this is one of those English words where I always get the I and the E confused, but I used a bit of help here and it helped me out. So now we have a yield. Now what I want to see is when I run it again, does the 10 get an exclusive access uh, to finish up or does the CPU actually choose a different thread at some point? Let's find out. So I run and Java application, expand and let's see. It looks like we have 10 and then the one thread, the one thread, the 10, the 10, the one, the 10, the one, one, one. A nicer mix. Remember the last time the 10 got nearly exclusive access once the one thread hit only five laps. Now you see they're sharing back and forth a little bit more. Now the sharing again is a little bit random, but you see that they are kind of handing off and cooperating a, a bit better. There is a nice mix, even though these priorities are uh, different threads. Now let's take a look at sleep. Sleep happens when a thread essentially blocks itself for a certain amount of time. By blocking itself, it's still alive. It simply can't do anything until it's unblocked. So sleep means I'm going to wait. I'm going to let other threads run while I'm waiting. Let's take a look at that. So in our source code, I'm going to re-enable the sleepy thread. And let's go take a look at what the sleepy thread does. So the sleepy thread, uh, has an, it, it goes for 20 iterations. And on the 10th iteration, it sleeps. I'll tell you what we'll do. We will make this one 30,000 milliseconds. That's, a, that's a, a millisecond indication right there, which is essentially half a minute. 
So I'm going to make that half a minute, but I do want to demonstrate that other threads can run while sleepy thread is sleeping. So I'm going to move sleepy thread above the low and the high priority thread, and we'll go ahead and run the low and the high priority thread. Let's see how this looks. So right click and run again. I run this Java application and I pop open the console. Note right now the last thing that we see is the number 10 thread. I scroll up a little bit and what do we see up, uh, up above? We see it does the first few iterations of I'm tired and then it says I'm sleeping. After it falls asleep, the 10 and the 1 thread that we saw in our last demonstration continue to work. Now we scroll all the way towards the bottom and in just a minute take a look I'm tired now appears. If you, if you watched closely before, you can even rewind the video a little bit. If you watched closely before, you notice that wasn't there before. Now what is that? Well remember, our sleepy thread starts with a few iterations of I'm tired, then it goes to sleep for 30 seconds. When it wakes up, it's able to start working again. So this is when it has woken up and the CPU has given it control one more time. That covers some of the more common thread methods that you'll see. I also want to talk about synchronized and wait notify. Both of those are going to require a bit of a dip into the debugger, uh, which could take a bit of time. So I'm going to cover those in separate videos that will quickly follow this video. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.